Hey there, this is John Kurakawa, and today we're going to talk about every clarinet player's favorite subject, reeds. If you find this content helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel as it really helps to get the word out. I like to consider the reed my ally and keep a positive attitude, not my enemy. I mean, after all, if the reed is responsible for the beautiful singing tone of the clarinet, then we owe it a little bit of gratitude, right? A little bit of respect. That being said, every clarinet player has a different way of managing their reeds. So this is what I do. Take what you need and leave the rest. This is the basic procedure that I follow. If you'd like to see something a little bit more in depth about how I balance my reeds, please leave a mention in the comments below. So first, I'd like to cover two basic concepts. First, work with the entire box of reeds at a time. I know that reeds are expensive, but even if you're a beginner playing on Rico Orange Box two and a half reeds, you shouldn't be playing one reed until it's completely dead and then replacing it with a new one. Reeds are not batteries. Keep in mind that while that old reed might be really comfortable and might be an old friend, that your embouchure is gradually adjusting, not only your embouchure, but your voicing, your air support to that old decaying reed. And your playing is probably being hampered to a much more critical degree than you realize. Plus, when you actually do get a fresh reed on, it's going to be a complete shock to you and you're going to have to learn how to readjust to it all over again. So work with the entire box so that you have choices. Be persnickety, that is to say, be very picky. These reeds, when you first try them, you break open a new box, they're auditioning for a spot in your reed case. When you break open a new box of reeds, you're trying to assess their potential. Unlike some clarinet players, like the very talented Tom Ridenauer, I can't make every reed in the box play, nor do I have time to do so. There are some times in the orchestra when I might have two or three programs in a week, and I simply don't have time for that. I have to practice and learn all of my notes so I don't embarrass myself in rehearsal. If a box of reeds is filled with a bunch of lemons, you don't want to pick the one or two reeds that are actually lemons and then waste your time in a futile attempt to make them play. Try the entire box. Point number two, test each reed for response and hold. That is, does it respond easily without biting? And does the reed hold the sound together when you put a lot of air through the clarinet without the sound spreading to the four corners of the earth? Don't just test for sound. A reed can sound great, but feel horrible. And likewise, a reed can feel okay, but still sound terrible. So test for response and hold. Because I like to move quickly when I'm testing a new box of reeds to assess who my potential allies and friends are, I like to use the best ligature known to humankind, and that is the human thumb. Robert Marcellus used to say, if you really want a great ligature, go to the morgue and cut yourself off a thumb. I would not recommend that you do this. However, I do find that the thumb does provide excellent response in sound. So even when I'm testing new ligatures, I try to find the ligature that matches the feel of my thumb. So the first thing I do is I test articulation in the low register. I'll play mezzo forte to forte, just push it, see what it'll do. <laughs> I'll test response and articulation in the upper register, preferably piano, to see if it'll actually speak without biting. If a reed will do both of these things relatively easy, I believe that reed probably has good potential for you. So here in a nutshell is what I do. The first thing I do is I wet the reeds, and I like to use water for this, or you can use saliva. Honestly, because I live in the Midwest, when it starts to get really cold and dry, I find water works better. In the more humid summer months, saliva works just fine. Whatever you do, don't just leave your reeds soaking in water for 5, 10, 20 minutes, an hour. They will waterlog, and they'll be useless to you. So if you're going to use water, just dip them in. If you're using saliva, you might need to soak them in your mouth a little bit longer. But soak them and then lay them flat side up on the table. Next, try each reed. Just test it. Again, with the test that I talked about before. Hold the reed with your thumb and test the low register and then articulation in the higher register. 
with your thumb. If you want to pop your ligature on and tune on it a little bit, that's fine. But I wouldn't play a reed for more than five minutes the first day. And in fact, at the very beginning, just tuning a couple notes on it is perfect. Remember, this reed's probably been sitting in a warehouse for a very long time. When we talk about breaking a reed in, what we're really talking about is getting it acclimated to being wet again. That reed's been totally dried out. I mean, let's face it, if somebody locked you in a dark closet for three months and then all of a sudden opened it up and then put a big spotlight in your face, how would you react? You'd probably be shocked. Well, that's how your reeds feel when you get them wet. So when you first play them, just toot a couple notes on them. That's plenty. And then let them rest for a day. The next day, I simply repeat this procedure. I'll just try it. It's likely that the reed might have changed a little bit. At this point, I might flatten the backside. I like to use tools such as sandpaper or the reed geek to flatten out the backside. But whatever you do, don't take it into rehearsal or practice on it for a long time. Not only will the reed probably warp or waterlog, both of these things are detrimental to its performance, but it won't be dependable at this point. Just toot a couple notes on it, try it, let it get wet, and then put it, dry it off, put it back in its reed case. And that's pretty much it. I simply repeat this procedure for about mm, five to six days. Less than five days really doesn't seem to do the trick for me. The reed has to be broken in over a period of about five days. As we get closer to the end of the five days, I might play the reed a little bit five minutes at a time or so. But remember, the average lifespan of a clarinet reed is about 10 hours. I want that time spent in rehearsal, not being played during the break-in. I try to keep this process really simple since, if you've read Winnie the Pooh, I am literally that bear of very little brain. After the first few days, the reed might feel a little bit funny, might feel a little bit resistant in some way. It could be that parts of the reed are swelling up. So I'll test the balance of the reed. I'll actually put the ligature on and then test each side. I'll put the clarinet in my mouth, tilt the mouthpiece to one side. In this case, I'm damping the right side of the reed and then testing this side. And I'll hit it really hard with a good sforzando. And I'll test the other side. listening for the natural decay. I try not to bite the reed and make it sound better. I just try to let the reed tell me how it plays. And what I'll do is I'll scrape the corresponding side that's a little bit stuffy or resistant. Again, if you'd like to see a video detailing the process that I do to balance my reeds, let me know in the comments and I'll do a video on that. And that's really about it. Remember, take at least five days to break your reeds in. Seven is actually preferable. Get the reed used to being wet again. Once you do this, your reed will be much more stable and less likely to change as you use it. I'm not saying if you follow this procedure, your reeds will ever be completely trouble free. That'll never happen. But you'll have the least amount of problems if you follow this procedure. When I'm done trying my reeds, I put them in a good reed case. This doesn't have to be super expensive. Daddario makes some really inexpensive reed cases that you can use. Right now, I'm really liking the Van Doren Hygro case because it has a little sponge in there to help maintain humidity and it's ventilated. I also really like the Muncie Reed Wallet. This holds 10 reeds and it comes with a little plastic bag too to keep your reeds humidified. Whatever you do, make sure that the reed can rest on a flat surface and that it can breathe. One last thing, once you get some reeds going, you've hit that five to six day mark, start another batch. You don't ever want to be that clarinet player who's stuck looking for a reed, even though we all find ourselves there sometimes. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like below and please remember to subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions or you'd like me to go a little further in depth into this process, please leave a comment down below. This is all free and it really helps the channel. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one.